we're going to um, receive while we worship, what that might mean for each of us. So, the Bay is a community of believers with the leading of Father God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit at its center. The Bay is an oasis of God's love where we are restored and equipped to discover and walk in our heavenly calling, destiny, and purpose on the earth each day. Our daily yes to Jesus transforms our lifestyle so that we look like our God-given heavenly shape. The bay is a place where we can truly find our identity in Christ. As citizens of heaven, the bay is a gateway for heavenly encounters and the angelic, a place where we are set free from those things that would bind us. The bay is a place where we can dream again with God, where we are connected to the supernatural realm to access divine creativity for all aspects of our lives. The bay is a place where we are overwhelmed by the love of God and not the things of the world. It is a safe space for everyone, where there is hope, recuperation, and restoration for the broken, and where we are made whole in God's love. It is a house where people are loved for who they are, a place to call home. As children of the living God and united in Jesus, the bay is a place where we are woven together into God's love. Together we seek first the presence of God and not performance and platform for ourselves. It is a house where the body gathers to offer praise and worship our gifts and skills, our prayer and intercession, a place to love and serve one another and the wider community outside the church as our activities reflect this mandate, which itself continues to grow, evolve, and mature. We acknowledge and recognize the role of the fivefold ministry gifts and the streams that flow from them to shape us and help us to draw deeply on the kingdom of God. We believe that heavenly revelation is the catalyst for transformation and reformation, and we passionately contend to see this in people, to change the land, the region, and the nation. The bay is therefore a place for training and equipping, for raising up and sending out, to transform and change the spiritual climate where God has placed us. Focusing on pleasing God, the bay does not readily blend in. Instead, it is a launch pad and a beacon for kingdom of God change to the region and nation. All right, time to hear from Al. Thanks. It's going to be a little bit machine gunny, I'm afraid, because of the time restraint. We can't cover all of this, but there's a bit that I did want to cover, and uh, that is the bit in the mandate that talks about the fivefold ministry gifts where it says we acknowledge and recognize the role of the fivefold ministry gifts. And I just wonder what our thoughts individually were about that. And so I'm going to share very briefly some thoughts of my thoughts about that. But I want to start with a disclaimer, <laughs> if that's all right. It says, um, I said, let me start with a disclaimer. Here we go. Because if you don't hear this, you'll hear something else. Every single person has a role to play in the kingdom of God. If you feel that you are not mentioned in the fivefold ministry gifts, or you feel that you don't fit into one of those gifts, it does not mean that you are disqualified. Have you got that? Because I'm going to talk about the fivefold ministry gifts. And if you feel outside of that, you can quite often feel. Well, they're the important, and I'm not important. 
Nobody is disqualified. But there is an order, and there are different gifts that are given to the body of Christ. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Each, here's the, just the end of the disclaimer, each one of us can operate in all of the gifts that God has given us all of the time. Did you hear that? So there's not a gift of God that he has given the church that you cannot operate in. You can heal the sick. You can raise the dead. You can prophesy. You can teach. You can do all of the things. All right? End of disclaimer. But what I want to talk about is those people who carry the office within the fivefold ministry gifts. Okay? So we're all in. We can all do it. But I believe that there is an office that God gives to individuals to operate within that office in the church as part of the fivefold ministry gifts. And it's that that I want to talk about. And I want to talk about that from a biblical perspective. Why? I believe God is restoring, and you, you, you're powerful people, you can disagree with me, it's okay, I won't be offended. I believe that God is restoring governmental leadership, biblical governmental leadership to his church in this day. I know that makes you nervous, but that's what I believe. And um, so I want to bring uh, a scripture to you from Ephesians 4. And I'm going to read some of this, even though it's even at the time, I just think it's important that we hear the word of the Lord, because the word of the Lord is still the word of the Lord. We might interpret it funny. We might make the word of the Lord fit what we think is good for us, but it's still the word of the Lord. <laughs> it doesn't change. It's still God's word. Ephesians 4, 1 to 6. As a prisoner of the Lord, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort. How much effort? Every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. That's a good verse. I could preach an up for six months. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ appointed. Now you can use the term grace, if you don't like the word grace, a uh, gift. All right, so somebody can carry a grace on their life if you think gift makes them proud or puffed up. It's a grace that God has given the church. Um, so we carry grace as Christ has appointed. This is why it says when he is, uh, you see, we'll, we'll skip a couple of verses there and we'll go down to verse 11. So Christ, who? Christ. Not me. Not the leadership, trustees, nobody. Christ. It's important. Christ. Jesus Christ, the anointed one. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. Why? To equip his people for works of service. Not to do the works of service in and of themselves. So not a leadership that does everything. But we take part. Because we're people. So we do our bit. But we don't do everything. You don't have a five-fold ministry leadership that does everything. And you watch them. <laughs> the mandate hasn't changed for leadership in the church. And it's to equip the saints for works of service that God's prepared for you. Why? To equip his, for works of service that the body, why? Because the body of Christ may be built up. How long has this got to go on for? Until we all reach unity in the faith <laughs> and in the knowledge of the Son of God, becoming mature, listen, attaining to the whole measure, the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. That says to me, we still need the gift today. We're not there. And if you think you are there, come and have a word with me. <laughs> Then we will no longer be infants tossed backwards and forwards by the waves. I'm going to skip that bit. It, it, 
There's so much in there. See, I don't need to see eye to eye with Alex. But I need to connect heart to heart. <laughs> the vast majority of this about the fivefold ministry is how the fivefold ministry connect together. And it's not based on theology. It's based on relationship. And we'll get into it. <laughs> if we are, as a church, pursuing a fivefold ministry expression, then very few of us will have a problem with a pastor. Very few of us will have a problem with a teacher, although we might not agree with the teacher. Is that true? We do like teachers. Evangelists, they can be a bit more tricky. But we're not, the church isn't going to have a problem receiving an evangelist, really. And prophets, well, they've grown massively, partly with some of the help Mark's been given over the last 15, 20 years. And before that, now prophets are readily accepted within the church. Most people take prophetic appointments. That's unheard of 30 years ago. <laughs> but that then leaves the apostle. And most people do have problems when it comes to an apostle. And I'll tell you why. It's because they don't understand. But I want to tell you this. Jesus gave a five-fold ministry gift to the church. Not a fourfold ministry gift. And until all of the gifts are expressed within the church, we will not see the oneness through those gifts to bring the reformation that we're longing for. Because it's only coming through the collective gifts. I believe that God is restoring the fivefold ministry gifts at this moment of time or graces, if you want to call them graces, within this country. And other countries have been, I've found that to be slightly different. The fivefold ministry gifts were not given randomly by Jesus. What do I mean by that? I believe that they were attributes or factors of his ministry that he practiced on earth. So all of those fivefold gifts were wrapped up in Jesus. Jesus, in his wisdom, decided to separate them. Because he knew the importance of us being together. And he knew that one person couldn't carry all of those things. <laughs> but as a gift to the church. So Jesus was the best teacher. It says that when in, in Matthew 7, 28, it says, When Jesus had finished teaching these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. Some people have been amazed at my teaching, but not in the same way. He taught as one who had authority. Why? Because in those days, the scribes and the Pharisees, basically they copied text and they taught from a textbook. They taught from the word. Here's a word for us. Jesus is the word. He's the best teacher you can ever have. Prophet, Jesus was the best prophet that ever lived. Remember up the mountain, two of the greatest prophets that ever came, Moses and Elijah. And what happened? God opened his mouth and he said, Listen to Jesus. He superseded the greatest prophets. He was the greatest prophet. Apostle, therefore, brothers, Hebrews 3, I urge you, brothers and sisters, who share in the heavenly call, and that's us, fix your thoughts on Jesus, who we acknowledge as our apostle and high priest. One version says, the apostle we confess to. Wow. Wow. <laughs> have you ever confessed to Jesus the apostle? It's a very powerful thing. A very powerful thing. The pastor, well, he's not, you're not going to get a better pastor than Jesus. He, 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 he didn't just look after the sheep. He laid down his life for the sheep. The greatest pastor that ever lived. And the evangelist, he went around doing good. Healing all who were oppressed of the enemy. He went from place to place. Jesus took his ministry that he <laughs> ha that was available to him and divided it among a fivefold ministry that were gifts or graces to the church each of the fivefold ministry gifts has 20% did you hear that there is no preference in importance and i'd love to teach another time I believe there is an order. 
Well, that's for another day. But there's no preference and importance. How does the fivefold ministry work together? Well, it must work together. In that coming together, there's no good just having people who have the gift or the grace. The, the, the key is that those five-fold graces come together in relationship with one another, and from that, the gifts will flow. You just stick somebody in who has a gift, and they're not in relationship with anyone else, it's not going to work. Jesus did it deliberately so that the fivefold would have to work together. <laughs> but let's be honest with you, they're all a bunch of weirdos, aren't they? I mean, well, some of them are. You know, you love a pastor, don't you? You know, I'm, oh, I've seen you weren't here last week. I rang you 10 times this week. How are you doing? I've sent you a birthday card. Um, we love a pastor, don't we? Who doesn't love a pastor? I love a pastor. Teachers, teachers are a bit more, you know, it's all about the word. You need to hear the word, brother. If you lived by the word, not your word, my word. You live by the word. Teachers are all about the word, getting the word in you. Evangelists, well, if we, you know, if we had an evangelist today, they'd be saying, what are you sitting on your butts for? The people just went past in a bus, they're all going to hell. Get yourselves out there. What are you doing? You shouldn't be in here. Let's get them saved. Let's bring them to church. No, let's not bring them to church. Let's get them out there. <laughs> Prophets. I'm not going to be careful because Mark's on the floor. Prophets. Everything's about the unseen realm. <laughs> Have you seen the clouds? You've got a blue shirt on. That's revelation. <laughs> you know, I, I, we should ban people from buying digital clocks for profits. They shouldn't have a digital clock in the house. You've got two arms and two legs. That's the number four. Grace is on your life. They're crazy. Mark wouldn't mind me saying that. Bargain mad. And then we got apostles. Oh, let's not plan it. Let's do it. But then let's do something else tomorrow. Let's do something else the week after. What about a 12-step plan? Forget about that. Let's have a one-step plan. Let's not bother with a plan. I drag you all over the place. Calm down. Let's get a bit of order. No, let's do this. Let's do that. It's no wonder that they're called graces because the church needs grace to receive them. But in the big challenge, and here's the, here's the key to this, and I'm aware me time's up in a few minutes. Here's the key to this. People who carry a five-fold ministry gift see everything through the lens that they wear. So if you have a pastor who is leading a church, the church will generally look like a church that cares for each other. If you have an evangelist leading a church, you'll generally find that the church will want to be out there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Each of those gifts, those primary gifts that people have, we have lenses, we have biases. And I see everything apostolically. And that is really important for me to live in relationship with the other fourfold ministry. Because they'll keep me in check and in balance. I'm still going to see through my lens. But when we have one person with that lens leading a church, you see it time and time again. The church will look like that gift or that grace. The graces need to come together. And we need one big lens for all of the fivefold ministry graces to look through. If we remove, I believe that the fivefold ministry, when operating together, when operating well, in relationship with each other, release a supernatural into the church. And if you take away the supernatural from the church, you end up with a natural church. You end up with organization. There's nothing wrong with organization. You end up with existence. You end up with management. What's the job of the fivefold ministry? Well, we've said it's, it's to equip the saints. How long will we need these gifts? I think until Jesus returns. 
should we have, should as a church, should we have access to all of the fivefold ministry gifts? In my opinion, yes. They don't need to be in leadership. They just need to be active members of the body. But we should have and be in relationship with all of those fivefold ministry gifts. At some point, my time's gone, at some point I'd love to bring some teaching on, under, on the understanding of the apostolic. Doesn't mean that my teaching's right, but I would love to bring some understanding to that because I think when that gift is received, not understood, but received by the church, it will complete, I believe, the work God's been doing in this land about the restoration of the fivefold ministry. And listen, if you have any other ministry gift, as I said in the disclaimer, we need it all. But in this bit, for this bit of our mandate, we're talking about us pursuing the fivefold ministry gifts. And we need an understanding of them all. But more than that, we need to be able to receive every single gift. You see, if Jesus has given a gift to the church and we're not receiving it, we're missing something. The biggest problem we have is people. It's true, isn't it? Because all of the gifts come through people. It's the biggest problem, but it's also the biggest challenge that Jesus gives us to love one another. And unless we do it together, <laughs> unless we do it together, we don't see the fulfillment of the gifts to the church.